Water feature design series number 10. Guys, this is all about lighting. So if you wanna know how we at Modern Design install lights in our water features, you're gonna pick up some gold nuggets that will help you make your ponds easier to install the lighting in, and most importantly, easy to do lighting maintenance in because eventually all light bulbs, blah, 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 light bulbs, <laughs> you got it, it's early. <laughs> they all burn out, man, you guys stay tuned. I'm done yapping, I'm not doing so well with that. Anyways, check it out. Hey guys, John G, Modern Design Aquascaping. I'm here today to teach you about how we do a lighting system and a water feature so that it's easy to access, repair, and work on later. And I think that's super important. You see a lot of guys, they run their wires right in between the rocks, they foam stuff in, they build over top of it, and when it comes to the day that you need to replace a light fixture, guess what? It's a royal pain in the booty. So I'm gonna show you some stuff. I have this here pipe. This is 160. 160, 160 PSI. It's thick wall pipe. I see a lot of other guys that have started using this conduit methodology to run their wires through the boulders, and they use funny pipe. Guess what? This stuff, if you crimp it, you got it. You don't use it because you need to be able to get stuff through here. But this is a whole lot more sturdy. Like I can barely even squeeze the end of this with my hand. If you use funny pipe, it almost always gets crushed when you backfill, gravel, whatever you're putting behind your boulders, just the weight of a rock on top of it. And then when it comes time to pull your new light through, you can't get it through anyways and the whole thing was a waste of time. So make sure you use the thick wall. If you're using color changing lights, you have to use a bigger pipe even yet to accommodate the size of the wire and all the stuff that's attached to those lights. So make sure you're using the right conduit. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna watch me. I'm gonna string my lights in through here. You see a lot of other people that are gonna run these things all through the flower beds and they're gonna put in valve boxes and they're gonna gang lights up. I'm gonna tell you I recommend against that because what happens is you got this crap in your way all over the place. When it comes time to put in your landscaping, there's little black pipes running all through the flower beds. It's a total pain. Not if you don't landscape, you don't care, but seriously, run your lighting wire. Let me grab this lighting wire right here. See what we got here? We're using LED lights. This is overkill for us, but I like to make sure that if somebody adds a few lights to the system later, it's gonna work. We're gonna run this tight, right along the back edge of our pond liner, guys. Right tight up against it, and we're back filling it in there with our liner when we do our edge work. Every time we come to one of these conduits, I'm simply gonna run this line. I'm gonna leave a loop for every conduit when I come in, so that when I come back later, I can make a cut, I can make a connection to the lighting wire that comes out, and I'm gonna chop those things down. Guys, this is a three watt aquascape light. I know most people use these things and they buy the little three, three plug splitters, six plug splitters, whatever. Here's my take on that. You know what I like to do with this? I'm sorry. No, seriously, this is, this is what we do. Now on long runs, We'll take a string and actually a garden hose and we'll just put the string in the top of the conduit and we blow the water down through, we blow the string through, stick the string in here, tape it up, drag it back through. That's how we do a long run if we're building through a big boulder wall on the side of a pond. This is nice and easy for a waterfall project. I'm just gonna feed this thing through here, assuming I can get it untied. That's what's gonna happen with this. This makes life so much easier. Look at that. Just like that, guys. Now, the trick is when you do your edge work, we're gonna cut this off nice and flat. It's gonna be flush. You want it to be just below where your edge work's gonna be so a little bit of gravel hides it. It's not a problem. It's easy to find. It's easy to replace. This makes our life so much easier to deal with this madness later on. Not that a light would ever burn out, but oh yeah, wait, eventually every light burns out. Just saying. Take care of yourself on the front end. That's what you got. That's how hard it is to pull that through there. It's not. I'm done talking about that. So you're seeing right here, this is, my liner is gonna be about an inch below the surface of this rock right here, guys. Which means that this conduit is sticking up. I've gotta cut the conduit. If you're not real good with your razor blade knife, make sure you cut the conduit down before you run your wire through because the last thing you wanna do is clip your wire down in here and then you have to redo the entire connection. So make sure that you're either skilled with your knife or you cut the conduit to the proper height before you do your couplings. All right, 
So it's this simple now. You see me pull the lighting wire up through there? I snip this off to match. Guys, this ain't rocket science, seriously. Split the wires. I don't feel like I should be, if you haven't got a clue how to do this, you're gonna probably, shouldn't be doing this. This is the complexity of the whole project, right? I'm splitting these guys up. I'm stripping these wires off. Surely you know how to do this part, and you know how to do this part. About three quarters of an inch. I always cut them too long, and then I say I'll cut them shorter next time, but I don't. This is a quick connection. I know this isn't how Aquascape suggests you do it. Now, if we're troubleshooting a lighting system, we do use a voltage meter to make sure that we have proper voltage. That's not what this video is about, but you should be aware that that's a thing. There is a proper voltage for your lights. Make sure that you understand what you're hooking up on that end. I'm not teaching you that right now. All right, one of each wire, tight together. I always use outdoor rated electrical tape. I'm gonna go around and around. Go around the same direction that you screw your wire nut on so you don't take your tape off when you put your wire nut on. Good trick, righty tighty. There it is, there's my tape. Got one silicone filled wire nut. This is weatherproof, it is not waterproof. Don't stick it under water. This is to keep the moisture off of it, guys. All right. Turn this till it's snug. Silicone starts gooping out. Then I take my electrical tape and I'm gonna protect this. I'm gonna wrap this whole wire nut on here nice and tight and trap my silicone inside. I'm gonna go do that on the other one. See, I didn't do it on this one. Now I got silicone all over me. Just waterproof that stone. All right. The hydrophobic stone. Yes, yes, it's now hydrophobic. You are correct. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard from Jake the Scientist. Here we go. All right, that's wrapped. Now the last part of this is, I like to take this and bend it around and tape all of this together with a couple of wraps. That's so that if somebody comes in here and pulls on one end of the wire or the other, they don't jerk your connections loose because then you're digging around looking for a loose connection, which is no fun. So, there. That is a tight, weatherproof connection. This will be buried nice and snugly right against the back of my liner, out of the way, and when the landscapers come in, they're not gonna cut my lighting wire all to pieces. And when I make my video, if this light burns out, I know that this light connection is right here because I've made that video about where my lights are and where my connections are. And I can come back and take apart one connection. I don't have to diagnose which one's which. I can pull my new light through and fix it like five minutes flat, guys. That's worth its weight in gold, just saying. All right, here's another thing. You see how I'm gonna situate my light in here? Always recommend, you know, the Aquascapes give you these really cool little plastic stands that come with your lights. I'm saying, that's like amateur homeowner stuff. Don't put those things in here where your lights are gonna fall off of them and you're gonna have to look at that stuff. Situate your light right under. My waterfall is gonna be sheeting off of here. I've done a good job of putting rocks in front of it. So it's gonna block that headlamp effect from the viewing area, which is over there. It's gonna light up and cast a nice glow on this. And because I have treetops over top of me, this straight up light beam through this white water is gonna give me that magical firelight. Don't forget to create some magical firelight, guys. Seriously, a light in a pond isn't cool unless it's magical. So yeah, do that. When you get finished with the whole thing, especially in a pond, make yourself an after job video and don't gang these things together. One light, one connection. One light, one connection. You walk around at the end of the job and you go, here is the light, the connections next to that rock. Here is the light, the connections next to that rock. Go all the way around your water feature like that, shoot a video, put it in your client file. When your team goes back out to replace a light, you're not gonna start digging up wires to figure out what's going on. You're gonna watch a five minute video. You're gonna go, that light's out. The connection's there, you know right where to dig. It's one single connection. You don't have to start pulling apart 15 different connections to figure out which light it is that's out. Guys, if you learn something about running your lighting, 
it helps you install a better lighting system in your water feature, do what you know you need to do, give us a thumbs up, don't be a bonehead, hit the thumbs up button, seriously, I mean it, give us one of those, one of those, or one of those, do something, type a little something in and say thanks for helping us out, John, we really appreciate you taking the time, do something, give me a little love, I mean that, subscribe to our channel, that's all I gotta say, I'm done.